through my comments and I had one of my viewers mention to me that they wish I had shown them getting this machine unstuck because they're having a similar problem so I thought I'd go over with this 306 and talk about what I do to get my machines unstuck and this can apply for any machine that you're working on but uh, I'm gonna show you some spots on this machine that are oil holes and then other spots that aren't oil holes because I see a lot of videos on this machine on YouTube and I see people mentioning to oil this spot in that spot and I'm like that's not an oil hole and then I'm like what about that spot they never mentioned that spot so if the person that left me the comment is watching this video I hope this helps you out getting your machine unstuck but for me when I got this one the zigzag mechanism was locked up and my stitch length mechanism or uh, stitch length lever sorry was stiff as well and that's because this was seized into place it wasn't moving and once I got this moving obviously that was easy to go but this zigzag mechanism is what I had an issue with the machine was turning over very slowly and I hooked the motor up put a belt on it and it was going very slow and you don't want to you don't want to force your machine guys with the electric motor you'll burn out your motor don't do that so I always will oil everything and I'm going to go over this machine and show you guys some oil ports that you might not know about and some spots that you should oil that other people don't mention uh, but anyways uh, this machine was turning really slowly when I tried to get it going so I said okay I got to dig a bit deeper so I undid the screws on this cover and I took this cover off and you can look at the cover here guys and you can see there's all these oil holes here for me I would prefer to take this cover off to oil a 306 okay so get that cover off if you have one because there's two oil holes on this mechanism here there's one here and one here that nobody ever mentions okay and that controls that lever for the cam so there's two holes there. This is not an oil hole. This is a grub screw hole to hold the pin. You can see the chrome circle right there. Well, that's the pin that goes through the machine. And on the back side, they put a grub screw in there to stop the pin from coming out. So that is not the oil hole. These are the oil holes, all right? Then you have an oil hole here. And you have another oil hole here. This is threaded. And this is threaded. So anything you see with threads in it is not an oil hole. All right? And don't put oil on that cleated belt, guys. If you have a 306 or a 319 or 206, don't put oil on that cleated belt. <coughs> Excuse me. You have two oil holes up here. I also like to just put a little bit of oil on my presser foot piece here as well. That's what was sticking on this machine. I took this whole piece out and cleaned it. And you can see I cleaned the uh, all these pieces down here. But those are holes there that uh, some people don't know about. So I oiled all of that. And then I made sure that this was clean. And my mechanism was still stiff after I oiled everything. So uh, I did all the holes on the bed. I'm going to unplug this right now. Then on the back side, you can see there's a hole here, but some people don't know there's an, a hole underneath right here. So you have your electric motor. There's a hole in the machine right here as well. There's two at the back of the column. So one there, one there, and there. So there's three alone right in this little piece right here. Some people don't know about. <coughs> this oil hole, oil hole. So the ones on the on the main part are obvious. But on this machine, because my zigzag was still acting up, now we gotta open up this back cover. 
Now on a zigzag 306, I'm not sure if the 319 is like this, but I'm pretty sure it is, has this arm right here. And you can see this arm controls this piece here. All right. So I had to make sure that I lubricated all these pieces. There's also another little oil hole back here because there's a shaft going through the machine that works the zigzag. So there's an oil hole back here that's got to be done. Also, and this is where I had the problem on my machine. You can see this big circle right here. And I'll move the zigzag. See if you can see that in the camera, see it moving. I had to oil in around here. And I had to oil right between here. Now, there's a square block that goes up and down inside of a shaft, slotted shaft here. And you have to oil that as well. This piece and this piece back here, there's oil hole here and oil hole here. They were the pieces that were giving me my stiff issue with the machine when I turned it. Now you guys can notice I do need some grease on here. I have been running the machine, but what I did was I put one drop of oil on there to loosen up the old stuff while I ran the machine. And I used a Q-tip to clean out those gears because I'm going to put some fresh grease on there. But I'm only doing my service right now. So once I get the machine all running free and smooth like it is now, you can see how easy this machine moves. That's when I will um, grease everything when I'm ready to do my final cleaning and put it back together. But anyways, uh, let me get my zigzag mechanism back straight here. I'm going to show you the undercarriage of this machine. Talk about the underside. Because all these areas, those oil holes that you're doing from above, they actually oil all these shafts here, 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 here. That's all done from above. But I still like to get on a stuck machine when I find the machine stiff. I like to put an oil on any friction point where the shafts go into those areas. That way the oil is working from above and from below, freeing up any of the loose pieces. I also did that on all of these and I don't see people talk about oiling the lobes. There's a oh, dogs just love barking. Mind the barking because I can't control my dogs. <laughs> but anyways, this shaft here has some lobes that need oil here and here and they also need cleaning. Um, I clean the surfaces between this fork. It's like two fingers and it goes back and forth. I'll clean the lobes. And I'll clean those fingers as well and oil those because some people don't talk about oiling those spots. So that needs oil, that needs oil, your hook needs oil, anywhere that moves. That's how I get the machines going. And I'll keep turning them slowly, keep going and keep going, and make sure everything's working good. And then from there, you know something I just noticed, guys? Looks like somebody's done some repairs on these cleats. I'm going to take a picture and show you guys these cleats. I just just caught this right now. I have one metal cleat and then it looks like two copper cleats. And they actually say something on them. Maybe that's um maybe that's where the belt starts and stops. I don't know. I just noticed that. I never noticed that before. I'll have to check on my other ones. Yeah, there's two And then two. I wonder what that's about. I wonder if they've been repaired or if that's normal. I'll have to check on my other 306. Anyways, I'm getting a little sidetracked here. That's the oiling points down here, guys, that I like to focus on. All those lobes and all the spots where the shafts are going in and through things. Get some oil on there if the machine's stiff. And that'll help free things up. Don't forget down here. There's another shaft down here. But down here you got oil holes as well. There's an oil hole here. Um, there's not as many because a lot of them are up top. But there's another oil hole inside of here. It's hard to see. One inside of there. So just take a peek. I always put oil on this piece. I don't see any kind of oiling hole there. But it's a pivoting point. So put some oil on it. The way I look at it, can't hurt the machine by putting too much oil on it when you're trying to get it unstuck. Just make sure that you wipe all that old oil and all
all the excess oil off before you're ready to do your final oiling and reassembly because I do take things apart but most of the times I'll just run the machine I'll get the plug plug it in have everything oiled up make sure that my hook is not hitting my needle proper needles in the machine okay everything's moving nothing's clunking then I'll just step on the pedal and run the machine just let her go bring the speed down see how things work it's still stiff add a little bit of more oil move it around sometimes I like to go really slow see how slow I can go that will let me know how free the machine's moving. This one seems to be working really good now. The more I play with it, the more free it becomes and the more that old oil breaks down with the new oil in there. I tell you guys, all I use is oil to clean these machines and service them. Don't get me wrong, I polish all of these metal pieces. I get the metal polish out take them apart I pulled this apart completely polished it pulled all these pieces off polished them polished uh, the arms and don't forget inside of the head here even though you got oil holes here there's still more oiling to do in here so I suggest guys getting a manual and then just looking for anywhere that's got friction points if you have a stuck machine I'm pretty sure if it's a singer and you just get the oil in the right spots give it a little bit of time it'll come back to life this one when I first hooked up the motor even after I oiled everything when I stepped on that pedal it was going it had like a a hard spot and that was that zigzag and that mechanism in the back it had varnish on it so I couldn't get in there and get all the varnishing off right away so by putting excess oil on it and just keep turning the machine it was able to break some of that old varnish free and then as soon as that varnish broke free um i was like okay it's starting to feel better i stepped on the pedal again the machine started moving quicker and it started picking up speed and i just kept holding the pedal as the speed picked up and then once it was running nice and free i was like okay i stopped did one more oiling hit the pedal again and here we are how smooth that rotary runs Tell you guys, can't go wrong with a Singer Rotary. Whether it's a 306, 206, 319, they're great machines. I know a lot of you guys like the slant of needles, but I love these things. Anyways, that's enough jibber-jabber. Till next time, guys. Stay safe. I'll talk to you again soon.